Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Today we're diving headfirst into the enchanting world of individualism. You know, that glorious concept that tells us we can pull ourselves up by our bootstraps. And if we don't succeed, well, it's probably because we're just not trying hard enough. But don't worry, you can still blame it on your parents. Let's start with a little quote from the great philosopher Ralph Waldo Emerson, who said, Trust thyself. Every heart vibrates to that iron string. Great advice. Except when you realize that your heart isn't the only thing. Vibrating it's also your smartphone buzzing with notifications from the social media accounts that somehow define your worth. Individualism teaches us that we're islands, cut off from each other's struggles and triumphs. But isn't it funny how every island is surrounded by water? You know, like the ocean of societal influence, economic factors, and good old-fashioned luck. Sure, you're individualistic, but good luck paddling that canoe without a paddle. Let's get real. How many of you have heard someone bragging about their self-made success? I did it all by myself. They proclaim, probably while standing in front of a mansion bought with money they didn't really earn. Here's a thought. Have you ever wondered how many self-made people had a little help from family connections? Privileged backgrounds? Or, I don't know, a trust fund? As the author Thomas Piketty said, the past is never dead. It's not even past. Yet here we are, acting like individualism means forgetting history and the social structures that influence our lives. Maybe we need a reality check, folks. Individualism suggests that our achievements are purely our own. But what about the countless individuals who have helped us along the way? A teacher who believed in us, a friend who supported us during tough times, or even that barista who made the best coffee to keep us awake during all-nighters. None of us is as dumb as all of us, as the saying goes. So, let's give credit where it's due. Maybe it's time to recognize that we're part of a larger tapestry, a web of interconnected lives where each thread matters. But hey, who needs that kind of humility when you can just keep shouting, I did it my way, like Frank Sinatra on steroids. Now, let's address the elephant in the room, interdependence. The idea that we need each other can be downright terrifying, right? After all, if we admit we're dependent on others, we might have to confront our vulnerabilities. It's much easier to slap a self-made sticker on our foreheads and pretend that we're invincible. But let's take a cue from the wise words of Helen Keller, who said, Alone, we can do so little. Together, we can do so much. Together, yikes. What are we? A group project. And then there's the corporate angle. Companies love to promote individualism in their workplaces. You're not just a number. You're a unique talent. They tell you while assigning you to a cubicle smaller than a doghouse. It's a clever tactic. By glorifying individualism, they can keep us competing against each other instead of banding together to demand fair wages and better conditions. Let's face it, the corporate world has it figured out. Keep everyone focused on their individual goals, and you'll never have to worry about a labor union. You do you, and we'll keep profiting, social media. Oh, it's the cherry on top of the individualism Sunday. Everyone curates their lives like they're the star of their own reality show. Look at me. I just completed a marathon. But hold on, did you mention you were training for it for a year? Had a coach? and, oh, I don't know, supportive friends cheering you on. As Oscar Wilde said, be yourself. Everyone else is taken. But here's a thought. Maybe we could just be ourselves together. How revolutionary. Let's embrace the idea that our identities are influenced by the community around us. Or better yet, Let's just scroll through Instagram for validation and pretend we're doing fine. 
Hyper-individualism can lead to a toxic cycle. It fosters isolation, loneliness, and mental health issues. Yet we keep pushing the narrative that we should just try harder. Newsflash, we're not all cut out to be lone wolves. Some of us are more like, well, domesticated dogs, friendly, social, and desperately needing a belly rub from our community. Let's take a moment to reflect on this insightful quote from John Donne. No man is an island entire of itself. If we're all islands, then we're just lonely, deserted pieces of land. Who wants that? So, what's the solution? Embrace the collective. Let's break down the myth of individualism and start working together. Imagine a world where we lift each other up instead of stepping on each other's toes in the race for success. Sounds dreamy, doesn't it? The truth is, when we collaborate, we create something far greater than ourselves. Think about it. Every great movement for change, from civil rights to climate activism, has relied on collective action. So, let's put down the self-made badge and start wearing community-driven t-shirts instead. In closing, let's remember, while individualism can be a nice little story to tell ourselves, it's time we wake up and smell the coffee. We're not alone in this world. We're all part of a complex, beautiful, and often messy community. So the next time someone tells you to go it alone, just smile and remember. Together, we can do so much. Now go out there, connect with your fellow humans, and let's rewrite the narrative of success together. If you enjoyed this sarcastic romp through the myth of individualism, please like, subscribe, and share your thoughts in the comments. Let's build a community right here, right now.